Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Ty Talk Sports here, back with another video today. Once again, talking about the Spurs and Victor Weminyama. Landing this pick can change the course of everything. But, it's not just one piece that builds the team. Obviously, we all know in the past about how the 22 seasons of success were not just led by Tim Duncan. He had Tony Parker, Monty Ginobili, Kawhi Leonard. Wimby needs pieces like that too. So today, I'm going to be talking about four pieces that I think that the Spurs, if are able to trade for, could be such great fits within the system, within the roster, and as well be a Robin to Wimby's Batman. So starting it off, we're going to have Jordan Poole. Now, you may think to yourself, Golden State is never going to trade Jordan Poole, but this is all hypothetical. First of all, this is all hypothetical. If it's possible for the Spurs to trade for these players, I believe they should. So, Jordan Poole, obviously, we all know how he plays. He's a young rising star for Golden State Warriors and has untapped potential. He has shown so many flashes on so many nights. Such great talent right there. Can shoot the three, has an incredible finish around the rim, and can shoot from all three levels. Jordan Poole is just a really great player. He's a scorer. He's what the Spurs need, and he's a point guard who can handle the rock and even get some playmaking in him every now and then. He's a player who has the potential to score 30 points on six three-pointers in any given night. Who doesn't want that? Every team should be wanting a player like that. However, though, he does have consistency issues. That was shown throughout the course of the season a lot. Some games, he did really amazing. Showed out every single night. But then there were some games where he looked like he was just not on the court, especially during these playoffs. In his closeout game against the Lakers, I mean, he had zero points and four fouls in the first half. Jordan Poole struggled these playoffs after having what seemed like one of the best playoff debuts in such a long time during the Warriors finals run last season. Bringing him in could be such a great fit because obviously he changes the pace of everything. He can play fast. And he's going to score. He's going to take some heat off Wimby and all the younger other players as well. I mean, as long as he can get those consistency issues out of the way, as well as the turnover issues that we've seen him struggle with throughout the season, he could be such a great fit for the Spurs and potentially even be an all-star player. Moving on to guy number two, a guy who has been in the silver and black before, DeMar DeRozan. Obviously, let's bring him back under a better situation. During his time in San Antonio during 2018 through 2021, it was a much older roster featuring guys like LaMarcus Aldridge, Patty Mills, and as well as Rudy Gay. And guys like DeJounte Murray, Derek White, Teldon Johnson, and Jakob Pertl had not developed into the players that they are today. DeJounte's an all-star caliber player. Jakob's arguably a top-ten center in the NBA. Derek White, I mean, one of the best role players on the Celtics. And Keldon showed a lot throughout the season. Chicago is looking to blow it up. They've made it obvious. After their season last year where they made the sixth seed with DeRozan and Levine, as well as Lonzo Ball, I mean, it looked like they were going to have a lot of success. And this year, they lost in the, the play into Miami who's obviously now going on one of the most historic runs that we've seen in quite some time. DeMar DeRozan is not getting any younger. Neither is Zach Levine. So I anticipate both those guys potentially being available and on the market this year pretty heavily. DeMar DeRozan has an untapped scoring ability. Obviously known for his mid-range game and the way he can finish in multi-different ways around the rim. Bringing that in is something that the Spurs desperately need. A wing scorer who can control the pace who can score from the mid-range. I mean, DeMar DeRozan, we saw what he did in the few years with us a few years ago. DeMar DeRozan was great. He was genuinely a really great fit with us. So bring him back. Bring him back with the young guys. Kellen Johnson, who has developed. Obviously, DeJounte Murray and Derek White aren't there anymore. But Devin Vassell, he could be a great mentor for Devin Vassell. And obviously, Jeremy Sohan will develop as well. And then bring him, pair him with Wimby. Obviously, and DeRozan brings such a great leadership. Such a great veteran mentality to that locker room that some of those young guys need to have. Those years that they've been in the league, they haven't really had a veteran's look up to. Yes, Keldon and Devin had uh, a few years with DeMar. I'm pretty sure Devin had one, Keldon had two. But, they have, but apart from that, a lot of these guys haven't had much time with them. He'd be a great fit. Bring him back onto this young new roster and let him have his scoring ability continue to shine. That's why I think they should bring back DeMar. All right, with my third player, we're starting to get a little spicy. In my opinion, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is 38 years old, and he is probably going to be the easiest of these four players to trade for. The Suns have made it clear that they're going to be shopping him after they have struggled to find playoff success since the 2021 Finals appearance. 
after trading for guys like KD and building that roster to be a super team worthy level of talent, such as the 2018 Warriors, they've continued to struggle. Obviously, they brought back Ayton. It's just the Suns have not been able to find playoff success. And once again, just like DeRozan, Paul brings one of the best leadership and mentor characteristics in, in, around the whole league. Paul is known as a winner. He brings a winning mindset. Wherever he has been, he has been a guy who will take his team to win basketball games. When he was with New Orleans, when he was with the Clippers, the Thunder, Phoenix. I mean, wherever Chris Paul has gone, he has not ever had a terrible season. He's a playmaker. That's what the Spurs need. They need a genuine playmaker who can, and can also score. Paul brings in something that not many players can do. Obviously, we know his success with young teams like Phoenix and Oklahoma City, and Paul's role on the Spurs could bring such a drastic change into the way that this organization moves. They could bring in Paul next year, and this could be a team that is already in the playoffs. Get at least a 7-8 seed play-in game. I mean, you know what Chris Paul does. We know that he's an amazing scorer, and we know how much of a playmaker he is, and he's also a really great defender. He's known for being able to steal the rock and pick people's pockets. That's such a great thing to, know, to be known for, especially as an older veteran point guard who has such an amazing offensive game. Chris Paul could genuinely really bring this team up quickly and faster than expected if the Spurs are able to land him. Now to my fourth and final player. All right. Let's have some fun with this one. Damian Dame Time Lillard. It's already been made clear that if the fans don't want Dame, Dame is open to that trade. He said, start the petition. The Blazers are a team that really seems like they've had no sense of direction for the past decade. They've had very little playoff success. I know they made the Western Conference Finals a few years ago, and yes, they've won a few series. But they struggled to find playoff success. I mean, they tried to run with C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard for quite some time, but that was never going to work. It's really hard to have a point guard, shooting guard, dynamic duo in this league. Obviously, that's why a lot of teams run to the point guard center. To have a dynamic position on both of those ends... As a ball handler and as a big man, that's what works so well. That's why teams like Denver are in the Western Conference Finals, while the Sixers found a lot of success with Embiid and Harden. Breaking up Lillard and McCollum seemed like something that was going to be inevitable no matter what year it happened because that team, like I said, they just struggled to find success. And it seems like every year, the Blazers continue to disappoint, disappoint Damian Lillard. Every year, it seems like that we hear, oh, the Blazers are ready to build a championship caliber team around Damian Lillard, but they don't. They always, they've always they fallen short in the lottery a few years. The third pick that they've had is one of the highest they've had in a while. Last year, they took Shaden Sharp, and Anthony Simons has continued to develop, and they gave him four years, $100 million, which seems like a little bit of an overpay, in my opinion. And every time you see, it seems like they're going to build a championship caliber team, they trade away guys who are talented. They traded CJ McCollum. They traded Gary Trent Jr. for Norman Powell, and then they traded Norman Powell. They had Josh Hart at one point, and they traded him this this uh, trade in line to the Knicks. It's never been a situation where it seems like that they are really willing to commit to building a full championship caliber team around Damian Lillard. And here's the thing. He doesn't have many years of his prime left. It seems like that every year he's always continuing to show that elite superstar status that Damian Lillard has, but he's not getting... Any younger. I don't know exactly how old he is, but Damian Lillard is continuing the end of um, his prime in the next maybe four or five years. I mean, and that's and that is a while, but with a team like Portland who is not willing to build around him, I wouldn't want to stay there if I'm him. Damian Lillard is 32 years old, guys. He's going to be 33 this offseason. Damian Lillard needs to be somewhere where He's going to be a priority. There's going to be a team around him. And the Spurs have just that. I've mentioned the young core of Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, Malachi Branham. He could be a great mentor to Malachi, as well as Trey Jones, as long as Trey Jones is not in this trade package. And obviously, you're going to pair Damian Lillard, a superstar point guard, to Victor Wembanyama, who is known as an alien, a generational prospect. 
Those two could have a dynamic tandem for the next seven years. Could potentially even be a team that's ready to win championships if Wemby develops as they say he will. They're saying he'll be the best player in the next three years. If Wemby develops like that and Damian Lillard continues to play the way he's playing, the Spurs would easily have a championship caliber team at their hands. It's simple. Damian Lillard, I do not think he'll be a Portland Trailblazer next season. Now, whether he's a Spur or not, I don't know. But I do not believe that Damian Lillard will be wearing a Portland Trailblazers jersey next season. That's it for this video. In my opinion, on who the Spurs should trade for. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss whenever I upload new content here at Tide Talk Sports. And until next time, this is Tide Talk Sports signing off. See you guys.